What's up guys, here we have a 2005 Yamaha G22 Gas, also known as a G-Max G22A. Okay, many names, many names. So here we have a, a crank no start issue. Uh, if you've watched a previous video or a future video, I don't know, it depends on whenever I get it uploaded. But I did some carburetor work on a G29 or a Yamaha Drive. And I was talking about the spacing between the airbox and the gas tank. Look at all that room. You could actually see down in there to where the, I don't know if you can actually be able to see them, but the nuts that hold the carburetor on with the airbox are down in there. And I could actually reach down in here and grab them with no problems. Okay, rant over. The issue with this one is a crank, no start. This one we have a crank, no matter where I go with the choke. no matter where the throttle position is, it's a no start. Uh, so this one here, I think, seems to be a running theme this year with these freaking golf carts. Uh, this one, I believe, is gonna be another blocked carburetor or a bad fuel pump. Third one of the day with a blocked up carburetor. All right, let's get, let's get the seat off and get this one worked on. Now it's gonna sound funny for me to say this, but I actually like carburetor cleanings couple of different reasons. They're, they're fast. They're usually in and out repairs. Don't usually require any additional parts. It's a cheap fix for two. Customer gets their cart back usually the same day when I do a carburetor cleaning, depending on how late it is that I get to it. Get this airbox cover off. I smell gas. Filters aren't that bad. This filter here, you could wash. You just have to let it dry for a few hours before you put it back in the cart. Otherwise, you're gonna be bringing moisture into your intake system. Now, like I was saying earlier with Yamaha drives versus G22s, even G16s, it's the same basic layout. Look at this, I can get in here and crack those loose with my electric ratchet and get down in here with my hand and loosen those shouldered nuts. Same thing applies though with these Yamahas that have this automotive style air box. Try to remove the 10 millimeter bolts in the back of the air box first, which I did not do on this because I already had the 12 millimeter socket on the ratchet, so that's why I didn't bother doing that. Oh, looks like I need an extension. But by doing that, it will make it a lot easier for you to get in there and open up those 12 millimeter bolts, or nuts rather. They won't be so hard to get off. So a couple people complained about the audio level, that it was too quiet. So I'm changing a couple of settings at a time. One setting at a time, but I'm gonna change a couple of settings until we get a really good sound. I mean, it sounds good to me when I'm editing, so I can't really, I can't really say. I mean, if you're on a laptop and your speakers suck, I mean, that's, that's nothing I can fix. Laptop speakers generally suck. Uh, wear headphones is what I can suggest. Not trying to tell you what to do, just giving you a suggestion. Let's get a Phillips head. See, this is the same design. It's a very similar design on the G14s, but it's the same design on the drives as well. The carburetor will slip right off. Here's a pair of dikes to grab the E-clip. Just don't bite through it and break it in half. You just want to grab it enough to lift it up off of its perch here. There we go. And then, Take the boot off, the dust boot. Looks like somebody has inadvertently turned that thing inside out at some point because it is not how it's supposed to be. All right, well, that works. Okay, carbs free, the isolator usually comes out with the carburetor, so you gotta break that loose. Sometimes it will 
destroy the gasket, so be careful with that. You can avoid that by using a thin flathead screwdriver and kind of just like scraping it back off of the carb without ripping it. There. So, just like the drives, it's very similar. Comes off very easily. I bet you there's crap in this carburetor too. So I like to use my ratchet to break this nut because it has like a impact reaction. I gotta get my little drip thingy. I forgot all about it. We do have a lot more room on top of the motor here to work. Oh, except the fuel line is still attached, you dumbass. I'll use my same pair of dikes here to attempt. See, these dikes are really st stiff, so I gotta be careful. I got pliers. And what I do with this, I'm sure you guys have seen me do it before, is I try to grab the fuel line. And because it gets stuck, see how that just snapped off of there? And it just slips right off. So before we go and pull this carburetor apart, we're going to test to make sure we have fuel flow. Key on, neutral. Well, we have good fuel flow and it looks like it is fuel, it's not water. A little bit of water in there, but it wasn't bad. Yeah, just a little bit of water. Nothing, uh, nothing that's going to concern me much, I should say. Um, Any amount of water, though, in the fuel system is a cause for concern. Uh, I should demonstrate these little guys, too. I forgot I had them. I got these uh, plastic clamps that we use for pinching off fuel lines and such. Okay, that'll work. That'll... Is, they're, bleh, bleh, they're supposed to pinch pinch off lines without cutting through them. Keep them from leaking, so I don't know. I really don't know how well they actually work, considering that that's my first time using them. Let's see what kind of crud we have in here. Oh, yeah, there's some debris in here. It's not... Uh, Kind of green stuff. See it? In the bottom of the bowl. It's still enough to cause issues, so it doesn't matter how much or little there is, it's if it's in there, it's going to cause problems. I know the history of this cart as well. I uh, used to work on this cart all the time from the previous owner. All the crap in the bowl. Uh, what I'm doing first, I'm going to clean the outside of this one. I just want to get all this stuff apart. Oh, this is proving to be a little diff more difficult than I expected. I got to get a bigger, a wider blade on the screwdriver here to get that apart. I know I'm just out of shot here. I'm trying to get this. Oh, this jet out. Holy crap, that did not want to come out easy. Okay. Yeah, like I said, I am going to take this over to the parts washer because it is dirty and I want to clean it before I take that out. Because the crap has just fallen off of it. Okay. So this one here. Come on. I don't know if we're going to be able to get this pin out without putting 
my vise broke. I was trying to remove locking lug nuts off of a customer's cart, which that video will probably be coming out in a couple of weeks. I might have to drift this out with the drift and a punch. Yeah. All right, so this pin is it's so flush with the thing I can't get it. Sometimes you can grab them with the dikes here. Oh, just like that, and pull it. You rotate the dike just enough, and it will slither out. Okay. I'm going to dump the parts of the carburetor out here onto the golf cart floor. I'm going to put the bowl back on. Put this nut back in, the bottom nut, and then I'm going to go over to the parts washer and clean it up real quick. Well, I think that is substantially better. I'm confident now and not getting any dirt in to this port. Take the bowl back off. Now, I couldn't get it all off. I mean, a lot of this stuff was just caked on. I could probably get it if I put it in the ultrasonic cleaner, but that thing's buried at the moment. Going through inventory stuff and everything is just buried on the bench. My critical stuff is not. Just the non-critical non components are buried. I mean, who needs a workbench? Sounds like the neighbor is poosh mowing. Great. Just what I want to hear when I'm making a video. I guess it's better than a dog barking. So you always want to make sure you clean out the venturi or the throat because of the soot. Like if you if you have a engine that's running really rich, you'll get a lot of soot buildup inside the carb, and you really need to get that crap out because it'll just get dirtier and dirtier, and eventually it'll start choking on its own. I dropped a bottle. It's almost empty anyway. It'll start choking on uh, the soot and blocking up passages, believe it or not. Believe it or not. I know that's gonna set off some of you. Seinfeld fans. I used to watch Seinfeld. Oh, what am I doing? Wow, that was stupid. No. Oh. No, wow, holy crap, what a... Talk about a brain fart, guys. Holy crap. That's the wrong screwdriver. Starting to put the carburetor back together. Almost forgot how to do it. Must be too many carburetor cleaner fumes. I think I did this already. Yeah, I did. Da, 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 da. Okay. Everything looks good on this one. See, I want to set up a permanent spot for the ultrasonic cleaner so when I do need to use it, I don't have to be fighting with everything else that's on the bench. But I also need to be able to get to it and turn it on and off and all that stuff. See, I don't leave it on all the time. 
I shut it off when I'm not using it because there could be times I can go a week or so without using it. And I just really don't want to leave that thing on, especially made in China. Mm, yeah, a cheap device like that bought on Amazon, I really don't think I would trust it unsupervised or at least prolonged periods of no use plugged in and powered up unsupervised. But if I had a spot where I can put it, you know, then it wouldn't be a big deal. I have to be able to get in and out of it easily, though. That's the thing. And where it is now, I can do that. Get in and out of it easily. I have to open these up. To do this, so just like all the other ones, you give it a little squeeze just to get the in that pin. Hopefully it's focusing with the pin. See how it's equal distance? You don't have to go nuts. You don't have to go ramming it in, smashing it in real hard. You're not going to get anywhere by doing that other than getting a broken carburetor. And, you know, here's a, I'll address a couple of questions that I get, too. So I'm thinking about this. All right, let me ask you guys this. I'm thinking about doing... Uh, just like some Q&A videos, uh, because I get a lot of questions on the videos about certain things, and I think the best way to address everything is to do a dedicated Q&A video, maybe once a month, like doing a, a Q&A kind of thing, like where I take all your videos, or all the questions that you guys ask down in the comments, and doing a video specifically on the most common there we go, on the most common questions asked. I'm thinking of doing something like that because I think that would be the easiest way because it is difficult for me to get to all of the comments. Uh, there are a lot of comments and a lot of the comments are on the same subject. My cart doesn't run, what do I do? So I can, I'm considering doing like a dedicated video on your most asked questions. I'm even considering now, no, this isn't completely planned out and totally in stone yet, but I'm considering doing like a live stream. Uh, my channel is capable of doing that now that I have over X amount of whatever, whatever the minimum is. I think you have to have like a thousand or two thousand subscribers in order to, no, you have to have a thousand subscribers and 400 watch minutes a month or something like that to enable live streaming. So I'm thinking of doing something like that in order to kind of answer some of your most common questions. Uh, time frame has not been set up yet. I haven't even decided if I'm going to do it. Uh, live streaming is something that I'm not... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm not a stranger to it. I used to live stream when I used to... Well, let's see. Let me put it to you this way. I used to... I was in the computer industry for a long time, believe it or not, before I went into golf carts. I was actually pretty heavily into them. I used to do live streams all the time related to that stuff. But I got burned out on technology streams and everything because it changes so rapidly that it's hard to keep up with it. Oh, one thing to note before I jump into that, the chokes on the G16, or the G22 is not spring-loaded, so it will flood out the cart if you hold it too long. Little side note there for you. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's something that I'm kind of playing with the idea of. I'd like to get your feedback on that. Just curious to see what you guys think of the idea. I know a lot of people would watch. That's that's not the thing holding me back. What I'm trying to figure out is when. Uh, right now, I am so busy that I don't really have a lot of time to sit down and do any type of streaming. Um, if I did do any type of streaming, it would be after work has completed, so it would be later in the day, kind of like a little, kind of like even like a, just a little bit of, of a way to reach out to you guys and just chat even. That's more or less what it would be for. 
don't go pinging. There we go. Okay. I don't know if you guys, hopefully you can see what I was doing there. I was putting the E-clip back onto the throttle cable, but I did it while the carburetor was out or off the engine here. I had it up on the side, so I'm hoping you can see that. Oh, don't drop that pin. That means I'll have to get on the floor. Again, I'm just considering it. I haven't decided or not if I'm going to. I would like to. Uh, it's just finding the time to be able to actually do it. That's the hard part. I'm gonna change this fuel filter while the air box is out of the way. I always try to disconnect the gas tank side first, and that's so any contaminations inside the, or contaminants, contaminations, geez, I need to learn how to talk here. So that way if there's any contaminants inside the fuel filter, they won't get sucked back down into the tank if I were to disconnect the pump side of the filter first. Because if you disconnect the pump side of the filter, then the tank will draw a siphon on the filter and suck all that crap back into the tank and you don't really want that. The whole point of the filter is to keep that stuff out of the fuel system. Six, 12, 19. Okay. Now we get to put the air box back on. Just double check, make sure everything's in place. Not like it's that hard to get to on this model. So yeah, I'm looking for your feedback, uh, but again, it's not something that's in stone. It's not a definite that I'm gonna do a live stream. Am I even putting that on the right one? Yeah. Just a question. I still have to crush a golf cart with the excavator. I gotta get them uh, prepared for such activities. Like if there's any gas in the tanks, I gotta get the gas tanks out. Oops, that's going the wrong way. That was going the wrong way. I'm fairly confident in my work. I'm fairly confident that this, oops, hurt my glove, will work. Let's drop that one there, that one there. Get this one started. not something that you have to go mega tight with. You just want to make sure it doesn't. See, this filter is still, still good, technically. This one. Yeah, it's not terrible yet. We'll save it for next year. I don't think they use this golf cart a whole lot. Okay, let's see if she starts. We're gonna start it with no choke. Hands right here, see, not touching the choke. Choke lever's down here. It should fire right up. Yeah, look at that. That is what I call a success. Let's get the seat back on. So, all right, guys, there we, there you have it. As you can see, that's usually what the problem is with your golf cart. If your golf cart cranks but does not start and run, nine times out of 10, it is crap in the carb. So pull the carburetor off, clean it, put it back together, reinstall it on the cart, 
you should be good to go. As you can see, I started this engine and it ran without even choking it. So we know that it's got good flow and it'll run good. So, all right guys, that's gonna do it for this one. As always, I appreciate you watching. Like that video if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you already haven't. Don't forget to ring that bell to be notified anytime I upload a video to the channel. Leave a comment in the comment section down below and don't forget to check the video's description for links to products I use every single day to bring you these videos. So, all right guys, as always, thanks for watching and we will see you in the next video.